Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. Welcome to some hangout time at Mr. Carlson's Lab, and some tech talk as well. So grab yourself your favorite drink and a snack, sit back and enjoy. Today I'm going to show you how well the 369 antenna works. I think you're going to be very surprised with that. I'm still working on it, it's not done yet, but at this point it's uh, giving me some pretty impressive results. And I'm going to also share with you a piece of test equipment that's been in my intro since the very beginning, but you've never seen it work. So lots of interesting stuff today, so let's get going. This is my specific products model WWVC, and this is what I use as a sanity check for my own internal oscillator here. So what I'll do is I will turn this up. And if you take a look at the function generator on the top, you'll see that this zero is flashing. So this is right at 10 megahertz right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this and I'm gonna put it out one cycle per second. So it's only gonna be out one hertz. And listen to what happens here. Okay, so here's two cycles. Put it back down to one. That's right at 10 megahertz. So let's go right to the last zero and put it out 0.1 hertz. All right, so we're here. Or 0.1 cycles if you like. So you can see it's even detecting that. So more resolution than what I can deal with here. So I should say the maximum resolution of this, right? So I can speed this up. That's out half a cycle. All right. Right about there. Need to start them right at the same point of the cycle. So if I start it at a different point of the cycle, the static will be higher. Here, I'll show you. So now they're locked. They're the same. They're still moving at the same time, right? They're still moving at the same time. But what's happening is, is that I'm starting them at a different portion of the cycle. So I need to try and sync them. I'm looking for the least amount of noise when I hit 10 megahertz. So I'll go like this. There we go. So now, as you can see, I've got them very close to being in sync. So I'll get more into that when I talk more about frequency standards and things like that in the future. So that's what this device does. It allows me to very accurately check my own internal standard and the standard that that this is comparing to right now is my spectrocom that's right at the top that's that blue box that you see in the intro right at the very very top so I can uh, see if I can move the camera and show you that let's see if I can move this part the shaking right at the top there that's the spectrocom right at the very top All right, put this back here. Pardon the shaking camera. My tripod is extended right to the absolute maximum there. So now how this thing works is my signal that's coming in from the antenna. So the 369 antenna is attached to the back of this thing. So right now it's receiving the WWV at 10 megahertz. And what it's doing is it's comparing my standard. So the function generator, which you see right here, is controlled by an external standard, which is the upper standard, which I just showed you the Spectrocom. So it has an external reference. And this here just allows me to move that around. So I can put the 10 megahertz reference into this device here, and then I can move it around by you know whatever resolution I want on the screen right there. So what you're seeing is me just taking my own 10 megahertz reference and putting it out one cycle or 0.1 of a cycle or whatever I want to adjust, right? 
So that's what's going on here. So it's just comparing. So this is the output of the function generator running into this. And then my 369 antenna is running into the back of this right here. And uh, this is just a, a WWV receiver. And of course it gives me the option to receive it 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megacycles, wherever it's most active. Since I'm comparing a 10 megahertz standard, obviously I'm gonna want it at 10 megahertz right now, right? So that's how this thing works. So this is that thing that you've seen in my intros forever and never seen it work. Here it is. The specific products model WWVC. Seldom heard, seldom talked about, seldom ever seen. There you go, there's one in action. I've had many questions lately. How well does your 369 antenna design really work? Well, I'll give you an example of that right now. And I'm not even done with this antenna yet. It's only going to get better from this point. When I'm completely done with this antenna, I'll show you how it looks on a VNA or a vector network analyzer and share the plans. So what's going on here? Well, I have a little radio that I recently restored in a video. If you look on my videos list, you can find the restoration of this little Fleetwood 6 transistor radio. This works about as good as it can. So it received a very good alignment and restoration not long ago. And by the way, if you look in that videos list as well, you'll also find the previous 369 antenna there. You can see what that's about if you're new to this channel. This is just two alligator clips attached to some coax, and this runs up to my antenna switch, and this directly connects to my 369 antenna. So if you look at the 369 antenna video, you'll see where the little loop is in the three wires. Come off that loop and go across the property. That's directly attached to this lead right now. There's no power, no amplifiers, no nothing. Antenna directly in right here. So this is the little lead that I was just using on my function generator and this was attached to the uh, specific products WWV receiver. I've just removed this and again attached this to my antenna switch. So It's a convenient piece of coax with uh, some alligator clips on it. The, uh, the radio itself isn't connected to anything as you can see. All right. So for those of you that are new to RF, uh, this might look a little bit magic or some of you might think that this is trickery. I sh assure you it's not and I'll explain what's happening as we're going along and I'll give you an example as well. So I'll explain all of this. This is just a little drawer of coils and inductors and chokes and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out a random, we'll call them a coil, all right, so we'll call them coils. I'll pull out a random coil here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that coil and I'm going to attach it to my antenna leads here that are, you know, led in from the uh, 369 antenna. So what I'll do is I'll just tune this down to the bottom end of the band. So this is the very bottom and say we'll stop around here somewhere. Okay, just see what happens. Okay, I'll turn this on. And as you can hear, it's just noise, right? So this new lab is pretty much an RF dead zone. All right, there's a few stations that will come in. If I go right to the top of the band, you'll hear some stations, but they're not that strong. Okay. So nothing happening, right? You can hear it's this radio. Okay. So I'll just take a random coil. This one's sticking out at me. Let's grab this one here. All right. So I'll move this out of the way. I'll move this down here so it's far away from this. Okay, there's no connection, no direct connection here at all. I'll connect the signal lead up now. Look at that. No connection, no nothing. I've just grabbed a random inductor and clipped it to my antenna leads. There's no power, no amplifiers, no anything. So from the wires directly into this. Right. Oh, that's loud. Right. Can attach it over here. You'll see that this is coupling. Jim, 
So what's happening here? Well, you can kind of look at this the same kind of idea as your wireless cell phone charger, right? So you have a charger and then you take your cell phone and then you put your cell phone on the charger. Well, there's a coil inside the inside the actual charger itself and then there's a coil inside your cell phone. And what happens is is your when you put the cell phone on top of it, it's coupling. So the coil in the phone is coupling to the coil in the charger. And then of course you have that transfer there and it allows your batteries to charge. Well, this antenna is receiving so incredibly well that there's no power on this. Like your cell phone charger has to be plugged in and everything, right? To charge a battery, right? This is receiving so incredibly well that I can just take the antenna and attach it to this at this distance. And it will couple to the antenna inside the radio. And it's like this is attached to an antenna when really the coupling is way, way over here. Now, if you think that's impressive, you should see what directly coupling this to a receiver does. So I will have that in future videos when I'm doing my restorations. I'll give you an example of that. Now, again, for those of you that are new to my channel, I do radio restorations on this channel as well as all sorts of different types of electronic repairs and, you know, designs and all sorts of things. So having a good antenna to demonstrate how well the radio works after a restoration is is you know definitely a needed thing right and again this new lab is an rf dead zone so i'm you know bringing in the signal into this right here no power no batteries no nothing just just directly connected right to those antenna wires so that gives you an example of how well that antenna works and it's not even done yet it's still going to get better so if that isn't neat my next demonstration will definitely probably lift an eyebrow or two i'll uh, get that all set up and i'll be right back all right i think i have everything here for this demonstration i think you'll find this very interesting you might want to go refill that cup of coffee all right so what i'll do is i'll turn this on to show you that this is still attached to the antenna so i'll grab this Little coil here again. If you want to drill it hard with uh your two plus control. Okay, so you can see this is still attached to the antenna. Alright, so I can take these leads and short them. Okay. Alright, I think this might even couple into the radio with them shorted. does with the leads shorted it still couples okay so what I'll do now is I'm gonna take these leads and I'm gonna put them across this little array right here there's four green LEDs I can add more by the way this is just four that I have here for the demonstration I have a little shot key diode across here and there's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor here to show you that you know there's no DC on this or anything like that right so what I'll do is I'll take this lead and put it to this side of the capacitor right here and I'll put this one right here I'll just turn the light off. And as you can see, I have four LEDs glowing. Now there's nothing except the center conductor attached to those three wires. There's no batteries, no power, no anything. It's just connected to those three wires outside going across the property. All right. This has its entirely own ground system. This is not attached to the facility's ground system at all. This is completely isolated directly right up to that antenna as far as even using porcelain standoffs to bring the ground down to the ground rods in the ground. So this has its entirely own grounding system. There is no connection between this and anything else. It's completely isolated from everything except itself. All right. So now I can go, I can bypass that capacitor. All right, I can reverse the leads because we are dealing with RF, right? Okay. I can take this capacitor here and what I'm going to do is just put this capacitor, this is 0.01 microfarad right here. You can see that. And I'll just put this across this diode right here and watch what happens to the LEDs. They go out, right? So basically I'm just shorting the signal out with this capacitor right now. Now I can keep adding these things. I can keep adding more LED. In fact, I'll put a few more in for you. 
Okay, so I'll remove this. Okay, I'll add another one. And uh, that one didn't have very straight legs on it, that one. And maybe one more. I think I have them all connected here. Okay, I'll bring the diode over to the end. So now it's across another three of them, and let's see what happens here. There you go. I can keep adding them as well. I just keep going and going and going. So I just had four on there just because four was fine, right? And again, I'll use something to just extend this lead because it's, uh, let's plug this in here, like so, and like so. So I'll just move that over here. And again, I can move this across this capacitor like that, right? Now, if I use my body across this diode, And see that I'm taking the signal off of it by doing this. That's how well insulated that signal is all the way down here. All the way to the lab from the antenna. I take this cap again and put it across the diode. So basically I'm just putting it across this point right here. And of course I'm just basically creating a short from lead to lead with this capacitor here. Okay. So for those of you that are wondering if this capacitor is shorted or not, you might think this is trickery, which it absolutely isn't. Right? It's open. Right? So if I touch this, right, you can see that this is open. I can go to the capacitor setting. These are always a little shy. I think these are about 8 nano. So I'm going to actually put this down because I'm acting as a... There you go. Well, 7. Yeah, 8 nano. There we go. It <laughs> wasn't far off. So there we go. All right, there's nothing special about the diode. I go here to the diode setting as well. So this is a uh, RF diode. So it's a shot key. So be about 0.34, I think. Yeah, 0.34. Wow, 0.34. Oh, right on. So there we go. All right. So there you go. The antenna is working extremely well. And I'll get more into why this is happening as the antenna is done. And um, explain a little bit more about this. So this is what's on the antenna line. I can light up all these LEDs right on the antenna line. In fact, let's take a look at the, the voltage here. There you go. Just because I have the leads the other way. So 7.2. Right? Pretty neat. You can see it's the meter is slightly loading it. You can see the LEDs dim out a bit, so it's actually it would be higher than that. The fact that they're actually dimming is I'm dragging this down with the meter, so the internal resistance of the meter is causing that to happen. It's actually kind of funny is uh I get a little flash of the uh, warning symbol here, which is kind of interesting. Very interesting. So there you go. The 369 antenna works extremely well. Well, I hope you enjoyed hanging out in the lab today. I'll get more into what's happening here in the future. Um, oh, I'll just quickly drop the antenna because you might be interested in that. Grab a, another piece of cardboard here. Something that will show what's happening here relatively okay. Actually, that just came right off. So. I'll move this out of the way. All right, just disconnect this. So in the 369 video, you saw the actual box at the top, right? And if you want, you can call that the feed point. And then you ha we have the first line on the top, which goes over to an insulator at the other pole over here, right? And then this runs to the pole. We have the second line which runs out to about here. There's an insulator here. There's another piece of line here, which runs to an insulator here and to the pole. And then the third line runs to here. We have an insulator here because it's the shortest run. And then we have a really long wire here again to this. 
So keep in mind that not only do we have this one, this one, and this one connected, but we actually have coupling to this one and this one and as well, right? So you can look at that as inductive coupling there. So we have more than three links, and I'll get more into that here in a little bit. This is all in the plan. On the bottom of the box, if you look at the video, you'll notice that there's a loop, and then there's a blue wire that runs off. That is the common. Here is where the coax connects. There's 75 ohm coax, which runs all the way right to my switch right here in the lab. So there's a piece of 75 ohm coax, pardon my horrible drawing. And this comes out here. So we have a center connector and then the barrel right down here. Well, this here connects to a box, which is my switch. Put this on here and then we have a bunch of different outlets on the switch here, right? And then this runs out to my bench and then I have my two alligator clips. This runs to its completely own isolated ground. There is no connection between any of this and anything else. So this runs down, down the actual pole, and this goes into ground rods, four ground rods at this point, and they're not very far apart from each other. This in no way, shape, or form, this entire antenna system is completely isolated from the facility ground here. Okay, so there's no connections. This is its completely own isolated grounding system, and it's far away from the actual ground rod system for the facility itself. And there's going to be more ground rods going in as well as part of what I'm doing here. So that's what's happening. There is zero connection between anything else. This is completely isolated from everything right up to the switch, and then the switch is isolated from everything. The switch is screwed to a piece of wood in the back and then it runs out to these two leads right here. So this runs to its own isolated ground system, and this just directly connects right to these wires. So in this box, as I showed in the video, there's just a wire that connects directly to here, and it runs out to these wires here. And then, of course, you know, we have our, our lengths of wire here, right? So if you want, it's to, it's to say you were going to put power through this, right? So this one would be driven, and then this one would be driven, and then this one would be driven, and then this one here would be coupling because it's insulated right here and here and then this one would be coupling as well from here to here and that's the entire system and again that's you know what you see that's making this all happen like so so again hope you enjoyed and i'll talk more about this interesting antenna system very soon again i'm still working on it and um, adding more things to it improving on what you see here so it, uh, it already is receiving you know as i say it's receiving you know incredible right so there you go hope you enjoyed if you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the show more tab below the video's description and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section so if you click on the link it'll take you right there. Alright, until next time, take care. Bye for now.